Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Auxiliary Power Supply of MOSFET Gate Driver. There are two videos related to this presentation. Here are the links. And I'm also going to print the links on the page of the YouTube video that you are now watching. So what is the problem I'm going to discuss here? We're going to talk about a the problem of feeding and feeding signal, PWM signal, and power supply in, say, an inverter. So here I'm showing a basic components of an inverter. We have a half bridge here. Then we have the driver, gate driver, the low side and high side. Here we have a level shifter. And then we have a controller, say MCU, which is generating the PWM pulses, which then it is uh, fed by a DC to DC, which is connected to the power supply, could be offline or say a battery power supply. Now in a system like that, especially if it's of high power, we recognize what we call a digital ground and a power ground. Well, the difference is that this power ground is the area where all the transistors, the power transistors are connected. They are heavy current uh, passing through this uh, plane, this, uh, usually a PCB of course, and therefore there could be voltage drop along this plane. Now, we might have similar things as digital, although the current usually will be much lower, but the point is that the potential between here and here is not zero. There's a voltage difference between the two here, and this is primarily AC, switching noise that you have from here to here. The DC component usually very small, but there is, could be a very high uh, difference in the AC component due to the switching, the heavy current, and uh, this could uh, come up to actually a couple of volts even in a system. And so these two, although galvanically connected, that is if you uh, use a ohmmeter, you'll see that very low resistance between these two planes here, ground planes, but uh, they are uh, from the AC point of view, they have some impedance and when there is a current flowing through it, then there is a potential difference. So these two are usually connected and this is why galvanically they are actually connected. And this connection should be done at one point. Now, if you do the connection at more than one point, say two points, there is a problem because between say this point of this power ground and this point of the power ground could be a potential difference. Here I'm showing it. See a potential difference here and then a potential difference here and then therefore you can have here a circulating current could be very heavy because this is the order of magnitude of the current that you have in the, in the power uh, ground and therefore it can actually mess up this digital ground because now it's passing through it high current. So it is not recommended to connect these two uh, grounds at more than one point. Now the trivial way to connect a system like that is of course to connect the PWM coming out of the MCU to the gate driver and then have a power supply or a DC to DC converter uh, from, again, fed from the main power supply, battery or offline supply, and then uh, feeding the gate driver. Usually it'll be something like 12 to 15 volt. And here I'm showing what's called a bootstrap arrangement. And that is that uh, since this point is now toggling, is going to ground and actually coming up to the voltage of the power supply. Obviously, you need a power supply here, uh, which will accommodate this uh, jump. And this is done by having this diode, which is now charging the capacitor when this midpoint is low. And then when it goes high, uh, the diode does not conduct, but the capacitor is actually uh, serves as a power supply for this high side drive. So we have two connections here and then we have the power supply for the gate driver. Now this is not a good arrangement. 
you can get by with it if you are talking about low power uh, and size a small size you can bring uh, the unit a processor close by but in a high power system when you have heavy current and then you have a large differences potential difference between the power ground and the digital ground then what happens is that if you connect it directly the voltage that this gate driver sees is not just the output here but plus this potential difference between the ground which could be very large and therefore it will mess up uh, the drive could cause uh, many problems among them shoot through and uh, um, malfunction so this is not recommended for high power system in this case what we'd like to do in a high power system is to put an isolator this could be either external isolator or could be internal to the gate driver there's some gate driver with isolation built in this isolation is such that there is no galvanic connection between uh, these two parts so there is no galvanic connection here so this is actually uh, floating with respect to the other one so therefore the output that you get here is clean independent of the potential difference of ground noise you might say between the ground save the injection of spikes through the isolation barrier which is a different issue i'll talk about about it a little bit later so this is a very typical arrangement in this case you need a power supply for this isolator again if it is a standalone usually it'll be like 5 volt so if this is 12 volt you need to drop it down but i like to concentrate now on the question of the grounding of these power supply this is the subject i like to uh, stress here so we have a power ground we have a digital ground now we have to supply power to these units in fact the, the same issue goes in here now the obvious thing is uh, if I have a power supply, a DC to DC converter, which has some ground to it, and then we have an IC that I can just connect the output here to here. Now remember that all these grounds are galvanically connected. So from the DC point of view, current is going like this, then through the ground. However, aside from this uh, galvanic collection, uh, for DC, I have here an AC component and therefore the voltage here now is not just the output of the DC to DC but plus this potential difference between the ground which could be high, could be harming the device. Not only that, in this case, I don't have a bypass capacitor here so therefore if I'm generating uh, or injecting current uh, AC or pulses into the supply line then uh, they'll have to go all the way here and here I might have some impedance like a inductance of the line and so the voltage here will not be stable so this is why uh, we are normally putting a capacitor actually two capacitor for a reason that I'm discussing in one of the videos that I've uh, referenced and in this case uh, of course we are capturing the AC uh, generated or injected by this device a gate driver here and also stabilizing the voltage here however this solution as it is shown here just connecting the output which has normally an output capacitor through the line to the IC is in fact a bad solution and the reason is that if you do that this is the low impedance this is the low impedance and then you have a current that will be generated here and I'm not talking about the DC, I'm talking about an AC current due to the AC potential difference between these two ground and as I've said this could be fairly high now since these impedances are very low and therefore for the, f for the uh, frequency that uh, we are normally operating the system then this current could be fairly high so this is not a good solution the proper solution is to have an impedance in between you must have an impedance in between 
The purpose of this impedance is actually twofold. First, it will moderate, reduce the current, okay, because now the current will be the this ground potential difference divided by this impedance. The larger the impedance, the lower this AC current. Secondly, you might think about it as a filter, you might say, such that uh, the AC component here will be lower and a better actually filtering of the signal. Also, injection of the AC here will be better captured here and not feeding here and propagating into the line. So this is the way to go. You have to put an impedance. Now, this impedance has to carry the DC. So there is a problem here. You, you must uh, make sure that the voltage, the DC voltage drop on this impedance is not uh, too high so that you'll actually reduce the voltage uh, from the DC to DC to the IC. So what are the possibilities here? You can use a resistor, you can use a ferrite bit. Again, I have a video explaining the issue of a ferrite bit and the characteristic of. Or the best thing to do is actually to have both a resistor and a bit. The reason is that the bit usually does not have a large DC component or low frequency impedance as a high frequency impedance while the resistor of course can help in the lower frequencies. Again a resistor will have a large DC voltage drop so you have to be careful with it. So this is the best solution and if it is just for a gate driver which normally will have say tens of milliamp then even a resistor of, of couple of uh, ohms will be actually very helpful. Now if the currents are much higher you might consider using an LEO. Obviously you'll have to start with the voltage which is a, a bit higher than what you need for the IC for the driver say because you need to allow a voltage drop on the LDO and now the LDO is actually be carrying this uh, ground potential differences on it and stabilizing the voltage here and it will be immune to the magnitude of the current of course. LDO is of course good when you have heavy current because uh, it can sustain a fairly high current with a relatively low voltage drop depending of course on the transistor or the passing transistor that they have in the LDO. So this could be a, a nice solution to the case that you have a fairly high current. Now some designers use inductors. This is okay. The idea is the same, putting an impedance, but one has to be very careful not to allow a high Q a quality factor because then you're going to have oscillation. So you can do it either by putting a series resistor and again you have a problem of the DC or you can put here a parallel resistor and of course the DC will be passing through the inductor and the inductor should be such that it will be capable of carrying the current of course but uh, if you put a, ser a parallel resistor then of course you're lowering the effectiveness of the inductor as a high impedance uh, element. Now in some cases the solution of the bootstrap that I've shown earlier for the high side drive is not good enough. This is would be typical in say a gallium nitride transistor. Again I have some videos on this subject in my channel, YouTube channel. And in this case you'd like to have a isolated power supply here. And in, of course in this case there's no problem of grounding at all because everything here is uh, floating as respect to the drive side. And the only thing you have to worry about is injection through the isolation barrier. Okay? And in the case of say a fast transistor like a gallium nitride, you have very fast DVDT here which might cause uh, injection of spikes going actually into the control unit which is very bad so you have to be very careful. Now some of the uh, isolation are done by capacitive coupling and in this case you like this uh, 
capacitance of the barrier to be very small capacitance in the area of, say, couple of picofarad. This is what you'd like to have in the case of a, let's say, gallium nitride transistor. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.